you are our greatest weapon of all. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. It's time we started this. Pain isn't something we thought. All we can ever do for our heroes is remember them. And they gave up two lives. The one they were living in and the one they would have lived. They gave up everything for our country, for us. They pray for freedom and justice. Some veterans not getting the timely care that they need. Less than 1% of Americans serving in uniform. Good news is, is that in recent years, we've made historic investments to boost the VA budget. What is it? Why should we care? We should care about press freedom because... Because we were informed. In democratic societies, free, diverse, and pluralist media enable public debates and are essential checks You don't look power. status. Let's discuss. Uh, hey guys, so what's up? Uh, welcome to Vet to Vet podcast. Uh, new episode about veterans treatment court. Season uh, three, season episode three. four. Uh, if it's your first time listening, then thanks for coming. Um, and as a short reminder, vet to vet is a nonprofit educational uh, project dedicated to assist veterans with adjustments, with adjustment to civilian lifestyle and to provide assistance in obtaining your VA and other available benefits you've earned, non-commercial. Um, today uh, we are talking about uh, Veterans uh, Treatment Court. So Veteran Court is a collaborative uh, process that includes uh, uh, the prosecutor, defense counsel, judge, the Department of uh, Veterans Affairs, and other community-based support organizations. The goal of Veterans Court is to rehabilitate and restore veterans as active, contributing members of their community. So the Veterans Court program focuses on veterans who are currently or in or entering the criminal justice system. So it's not about VA claims. No. Uh, the court creates and supervises treatment plans to address the underlying causes of the veterans' behavior and substance abuse issues. And the issues commonly address the treatment program that include uh, PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, anger issues, domestic violence, alcohol abuse, drug abuse. Um, the best argument for veterans court advocates said is that they seem to work. That's a good argument. 70% of <laughs> defendants finish the program and 75% are not uh, rearrested for at least two years after according to the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. Uh, moreover, those courts have uh, resulted in programs that have reduced uh, um, recidivism, recidivism uh, lowered crime, and rebuilt lives among the court's participants. And by focusing on the root problems that contribute to involvement with the criminal justice system and providing specific rehabilitation programs, the Veterans Court provides an opportunity for the veterans to return to the community in a more advantageous and beneficial manner. So, though things work, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So, just like Costa was saying, this isn't necessarily about benefits. This is about when you make a big oopsie, and hopefully you don't make a bunch of those. So, there are a few differences that exist among various states and within the veterans court community. For example, some feel that all vets should be accepted, including those who never deployed to a war zone. Others believe the court should admit only combat vets with mental issues associated with their wartime experiences. Some courts don't hear cases where veterans have been charged with violent crimes. Others do with stipulations. Keep in mind, even if you don't have a lawyer yet or don't have all the paperwork, it is critical to attend all the hearings on time. The court's first impression is important. So if you screw up, accept it. Don't be angry about it. Just do what you got to do and go through the motions. Mm -hmm. So who is eligible? So for eligibility, each veterans court is going to be operated differently depending on the needs of the individual jurisdiction. Veterans with cases in jurisdictions without veterans court will have to address their case within the court that jurisdiction within in that jurisdiction and will not be eligible for veterans court each veteran court establishes its own eligibility rules but in general a veteran must request to be placed in the veterans court program 
The prosecutor, defense counsel, and the judge must all agree that the Veterans Court is appropriate form for the management of the case. The veteran remains eligible for Veterans Court by making satisfactory progress in the court-ordered treatment program by complying with the other Veterans Court requirements. It is important to remember no veteran has a right to have their case assigned to Veterans Court. Once in Veterans Court, the veteran must continuously earn the privilege of remaining in the Veterans Court by complying with all the court requirements. So just like basic training, just like boot camp, roll with it and you'll do all right. So what's the process? So when we look into the process, Eligible veterans may participate in the court by voluntarily requesting their case be transferred to Veterans Court, which meets a separate court docket. The prosecutor and the defense counsel evaluate each case and must agree that the case is appropriate for Veterans Court. The case is then presented to the judge for final approval. The Department of Veterans Affairs Veterans Justice Outreach Specialist then verifies the veteran's eligibility for veterans benefits and conducts an initial assessment of the veteran's treatment requirements. The veteran, if eligible for VA benefits, is then directed to the local VA medical facility, facility for more in-depth assessment. It is from this assessment the parties agree upon the treatment plan for presentation to the judge. And upon approval of the plan by the judge, the veteran begins the treatment program called in for the plan. Progress in the treatment program is closely monitored by the court. Non-compliance with the treatment program can lead to sanctions which may include incarcerated and incarceration, community service, and reprimand by the judge. In cases of continuous non-compliance, a veteran may be removed from Veterans Court. The favorable terms of any plea agreement may revoke and a sentence imposed. Upon successful completion, though, of the Veterans Court program, diversion, uh, uh, diversion eligible veterans may have their case dismissed. Veterans on probation may have their probation successfully terminated. And sometimes you could get these uh, cases expunged from your record. So roll with it. Veterans in Veterans Court can expect to be subjected to more frequent reviews by the court to monitor the veterans' progress in the treatment programs. Veterans making satisfactory progress will be recognized by the court and offered words of encouragement. Veterans not, ma not making satisfactory uh, may expect words of encouragement of an entirely different nature and sanctions may be imposed. <laughs> so just like the military, when you screw up, they'll encourage you to do better in their own little way. And if you successfully complete the Vets Court program, you'll be marked with a graduation from the program. Yeah. So the goal of the Veterans Treatment Court, uh, as you probably understood already, is to divert those with mental health issues and homelessness from the traditional justice system and to give the treatment and tools for rehabilitation and readjustment. Um, uh, I don't know, like in my uh, view, it's just uh, um, a way not to go into a traditional justice system and uh, maybe have a little bit of better treatment and uh, less severe. Yeah. So if you guys find yourself in the Veterans Court, try and understand that they're trying to give you a second shot and try to take advantage of that second shot and don't screw it up. You don't want to be caught back into this loophole. And you could ask any of the guys that have had legal troubles that once you get caught in that system, it's kind of hard to get out. So if you're able to get in veterans court, try to take advantage of it and just mark it down as a mistake in life and move on. Yeah, and those courts were developed to avoid unnecessary incarceration of veterans. Veterans, not uh, anybody else, who have developed mental health problems. And veterans facing criminal charges who are in need of mental health or substance use treatment may be eligible for a veteran, uh, veterans treatment court if they live in one of the growing number of communities where this court exists, so they don't exist everywhere. Yeah. Uh, veterans treatment court, so you can look at it as a hybrid in between drug and mental health courts. They serve veterans struggling with addictions, like mental issues, issues or some other mental disorders. 
So they uh, promote sobriety, recovery, stability through a coordinated response that involves cooperation and collaboration with the traditional partners founded the drug and mental health court with the uh, addition of the VA, volunteer, veteran mentors and veterans and uh, uh, other veterans family support organizations. So it's just like a support system uh, merged into a justice system. So what are the usual outcomes of a hearing veteran in a veterans court? So most veterans participate, uh, participants receive treatment through the VA's health network, although some courts also work with veterans who are not eligible for VA care. Those veterans receive care from community health providers. While Veterans Treatment Court allows the veteran to remain in the community while undergoing treatment, a judge regularly checks on the veteran's progress. If the veteran fails to meet the requirements of the program, for example, if he or she fails a drug screening or disobeys court orders, the court will impose sanctions which may include community service, fines, jail time, or transfer out of the veteran's treatment back into traditional criminal court. Research shows that treatment court judges are motivators who provide ongoing encouragement to participants as they undertake the difficult work of recovery. The veteran's treatment court model requires regular court appearances, a bi-weekly minimum in the early phases of the program, as well as mandatory attendance at treatment uh, sessions and frequent and random testing for substance use, drugs, and alcohol. Veterans respond favorably to the structured environment given their past experiences in the forces. However, a few will struggle, struggle and it is exactly those veterans who need a Veterans Treatment Court program the most. Without structure, these veterans will uh, reoffend and remain in the criminal justice system. The Veterans Treatment Court is able to ensure they meet their obligations to themselves, the court, and their community. Veterans uh, Treatment Courts enable participants' likelihood of success, full re uh, Veterans Treatment Courts enable participants' likelihood of successful rehabilitation through early, continuous, and intense, judicially supervised treatment. Veterans Treatment Courts also serve as a one-stop shop to link veterans with services, benefits, program providers, including the VA, veteran service organizations, and volunteer veteran mentors. Currently, there are 33 veteran treatment courts within 29 counties, and Los Angeles and Santa Barbara counties each have two. Five counties have alternate veteran treatment courts, like Amador, Kern, Nevada, Santa Cruz, and Trinity. So guys, since... Uh, we are based in California. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, California Veterans Treatment Court. Yeah. So California Veteran Treatment Court is an intensive rehabilitation program that allows certain former military members who are facing criminal charges to possibly avoid jail and convictions. In order to be considered, the veteran needs to be, number one, eligible for probation, and two, suffering from addiction or mental illness such as PTSD. Depending on the case, defendants who successfully finish Veterans Court will have their charge reduced or dismissed. Most people who complete this program do not get arrested again. So, keep in mind, even if you don't have a lawyer yet, or you don't have all the paperwork, it is critical to attend all the hearings on time. The court's first impression is very important. So, number one, you may have to request a continuance in order to finalize your legal representation and to review your situation with Veterans Court. Don't rush into anything or plead guilty to anything just to get into a particular program or court. Inform your public defender or attorney that you are a veteran. They will, in turn, present the information to the judge and the judge will make the decision to transfer your case to Veterans Court. The VTC continually promotes education, job placement, and access to services for medical, mental, dental, homelessness, unemployment, family counseling, and all those other things that are offered and provided. So take advantage of these things. They're trying to help. Remember, veterans treatment courts are very involved and oftentimes the treatment plan can be very intense. You will have, to reg you will have regular contact with the judge, public defender, attorney, VA case managers, mentors, 
and the rules are based on your performance, which are directly communicated to the judge who rewards the progress or penalizes the non-compliance. So do the best you can. Take advantage of this option. It's a good thing to do, especially if you find yourself in this position. Don't be shy about it. Just realize you're getting a second chance and run with it and do the best you can and move on. We all make errors. Just try not to make the same one again. That's true. So, um, as uh, you probably understood from the podcast, uh, the informational podcast, that's, um, that's a court that actually runs parallel with the uh, uh, traditional justice system. And the traditional ones, for the same, uh, for the same mistake, it might be uh, a little bit harsh on you. So, the veterans court might be a little bit softer. Yeah. Uh, if you comply, you might uh, get a little bit less repercussions at the end. Um, so that's it, folks, for this podcast. And at the end, uh, do you have any book, great movie or stuff to do to recommend? Yeah, so another, another uh, cartoon for you guys is called Disenchantment. It's on Netflix. It's created by Matt Groening, who did The Simpsons and Futurama. And it's with a lot of the same writers same actors same artists and a few new guys but it's pretty damn good so if you're into cartoons and you love the simpsons and future always check out disenchanted and yeah. pretty good and a quote or uh, words of wisdom of the day victory was never in doubt its cost was what was in doubt in all our minds was whether there would be any of us left to decide our cemetery at the end, or whether the last Marine would die knocking out the last Japanese gun and gunner. Uh, said by Major General Graves uh, Erskine in reference to the battle of Iwo Jima. Uh, so don't doubt too much, guys. That's it. Thanks for listening. Until next time, over and out. Thank you, guys.